Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Al YouTube channel and it is Saturday which means it is time for another Inspired Saturdays collaboration here on my YouTube channel. I hope that you'll stick around, see who inspired me today, and find out how you can go see how I inspired her. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and maybe ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. Just about every Saturday, I like to team up with another crafty YouTuber for my Inspired Saturdays series. We will each be sharing a video today on our channels that has a new project that was somehow inspired by the other creator. If you're a crafty YouTuber and if after seeing today's video you would like to apply to join me, I will link the video in the description box below where I give the details and a link to that application. Now please keep in mind I did record it last year, so if I say 2020 anywhere, you can just know that that should be updated for the first part of this year. The application though is current. Today, I'm so excited to be teaming up with Beth of Bourbon Creek Crafts. I have participated in her collaborations, she's a part of my Sheetload of Cards team, and I always love to see what she creates. Normally, I would take inspiration from a card or other paper craft that the other creator has made, but because Beth does such cute home decor pieces too, and shares those on her Instagram account, that's what I'm going to be taking inspiration from today. Up on screen is a look at just one of the many cute wooden home decor projects that she has shared on her Instagram account. What I love, of course, is the wood grain in the background and how she has replaced one letter in the word with an icon. In this instance, it is the blades from a windmill. I will have Beth's Instagram account and her YouTube channel linked below as well as a direct link to my inspiration piece. I hope that if you're not already subscribed to her here on YouTube and or follow her on Instagram, you'll go ahead and do that. And don't forget, once you watch my video today, make sure to go what she has created that was inspired by me. I have her video linked at the top of that description box below. I will be translating her wooden decor piece into a card because you know I love to make a card and this one might go so fast that if you blink you might miss the process. This is going to be a quick and easy clean and simple card that I think you can replicate with items you have at home. For the background of my card to go along with the wooden decor theme or feel I got this piece of black and white wood grain pattern paper from my stash. This paper came from the Petals and Blooms pattern cardstock stack from Hobby Lobby. I have had it in my stash for a few years and I thought this would be great and different for the background. And just like Beth's piece, I want the word to really shine and be front and center. I am choosing the word love for my card and I got out a heart die cut to replace the O in love. Just like she used that windmill in place of the O in home. I will be doing a little bit of decorating. I got out some black ribbon, and this is from the latest paper pumpkin kit. They gave you lots of extra this month. And speaking of ribbon, I am actually making this card as well for my friend Danny's challenge group on Facebook called There's a Stamp for That. She has started the challenge back up in 2021, and challenge number 14 is birthday or ribbon or Mojo Monday sketch that she has shared in the group. I will be taking part in the ribbon challenge by using what I just showed you. Now if you're interested in going and checking out the group, I will have a link to it in the description box below. I really like how Danny gives us lots of different options for each challenge because that way the majority of us already have something in our stash we can use, especially when she provides the sketch for the challenge because then you can use whatever you have to complete that. I also got out some red and white twine. I thought I might combine the ribbon and that together for the decoration. Let's get crafty! Because those die cut letters will take up most of the space on the card front, 
I am going to cut the pattern cardstock so it fills that completely. So I cut a piece that's four and a quarter by five and a half inches tall. And then to decorate the inside a little bit, I cut another little strip and I think I cut this to one half inch tall. Then it was time to get that die cut. I brought in my dies along with my scotch blue removable tape. This tape will allow me to place the dies where I want them on this piece and then run them through my die cutter. And the good news is it doesn't tear the paper at all and I just stick it on my desk here to the left and I can reuse these pieces. Now because the letters are so large, I couldn't put the V and the E next to each other on the card front. So you'll see here I have offset these letters just a little bit. I play with those till I think I have a nice border all the way around and then I bring in my die cut machine. Once I have ran the card front through the cuddle bug, I bring in a scrap of red cardstock and that heart die that I want to use. I use the same piece of tape to hold the heart in place and I run that through my cuddle bug as well. Now another thing you could do at this point before you put away your embossing or die cutting machine was run that heart through with an embossing folder. Some texture on this might look great as well. I told you this process would go fast. All of my pieces are ready now so I can start assembling my card. I got out a scrap of black cardstock from my stash, added adhesive to the back of my die cut piece, and then placed this on top of the black cardstock. This is going to help my die cut letters stand out from that white card base. I did have to go in with my little scissors and trim a little extra off, but I like the way that that ended up looking. Once I had that ready to go, it just got placed onto the card front. The last step in today's process is going to be to add that heart to the front of the card. But before I do that, I do want to jazz it up just a little bit with a bow. Like I mentioned earlier, I'll be using that black ribbon and the red and white twine. I have mentioned a few times in the last couple days that bow tying is not my forte. So while I kind of fiddle with this bow and get it ready for the card, I thought I would bring you the QOTV or the question of the video. I have really enjoyed over the last few videos getting to know each of you just a little bit better and sharing some with you more about myself. Today's question. If you had to give up one fiber on your crafts, would it be ribbon or twine? Let me know in the comment section below and don't forget to include the hashtag, hashtag QOTV in your comment so I know that you want me to see that answer. For me, I would definitely give up ribbon. I used to have ribbon in every color and every width and I added it to about every card. But I think twine for me, you can knot it, you can bunch it up, and it just is easier and quicker to get on your cards. Once I have that bow all ready to go, I placed three mini glue dots on the back of it and placed it toward the top center of my heart. So far this card is pretty flat and very clean and simple. So I wanted to add a little pop to the card, so I brought in some Stampin' Up! Dimensionals, added some to the back of the heart, and then popped this up on the card front. And had you forgotten about the strip that went on the inside? Because I almost did. But I did remember to bring that in. I just added a strip of adhesive on the back, and then that got placed on the inside of the card. That way there's just a little surprise when you open it. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I put together today's quick and easy card. Like I told you, if you blink, you might have missed that process. But if you did enjoy it, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. Now don't forget to go check out Beth's video. Once again, it's linked at the top of the description box below. Until my next video, I hope you're having a crafty day. Bye-bye. 
thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.